joining us for our very first episode of Real Basketball Moms of 757. We're two moms based out of Virginia Beach, Virginia, that have daughters that play AAU basketball. Our goal with this podcast is to share with you our journey, raising student athletes and living this lifestyle because basketball is a way of life for us. Um, We eat, sleep, and breathe basketball year round. So let's start with some introductions. My name is Carrie. I'm Cameron's mom. And when I'm not living this life, I like art and being able to use my creativity to make beautiful things. And you do. Oh, and I'm Janae, mother to Morgan, Mimi, as I like to call her. I'm a nurse by profession, basketball mom 24-7. My schedule literally revolves around my kid. Um, And that's basically it because I don't have any hobbies because this is... This, this is, is my hobby. <laughs> <laughs> this is the hobby. And what about you, young ladies? Okay, I'm Cameron. I'm 12. My number is 30. I play the wing. My favorite food is sushi. Um, my favorite subject in school is social studies. I want to be an environmental engineer. And my favorite quote is, those who matter don't mind, and those who mind don't matter. I like it. Um, my name is Morgan. I'm 12. I'm number 32, and I play small four. My favorite food is shrimp, but I also like all foods because it's the best. And I like science, and my aspiration in life is to be a marine biologist. And, yeah. Yeah. That's about okay. it. Okay. So, let's start at the very beginning. How do we become basketball moms? <sighs> So maybe, <clears throat> excuse me, maybe it would be best to say how our girls got into basketball, which I guess in turn made us basketball moms. So, girls. You want to give it from your perspective? <laughs> My perspective? Oh, goodness. So, we were at the field house, right? Field house. And I was going to try out volleyball, but I got really nervous. And I was just on there on the side watching. And then um, one of the coaches comes up to me and is like, hey, you play basketball? I was like, yeah. And he was like, you should go try out for the Neptunes. I was like, cool. <laughs> and my dad, and he was like, it's AAU. And my dad was like, oh, it's going to be real hard. It's going to be real hard. It's not going to be nothing like you've done before. And he, he low-key kind of set me out. Set you but out tonight. Yeah. I'm gonna do it. But you did. I did. And that was fourth oh, grade. We, we wouldn't be here. Right, that was fourth grade. Mm-hmm. What about you? you? Um, well, I started in rec ball um, for about four years, four, three, four years, three, three years, four, three, three, three. Um, three years, and then um, most of the team for my rec ball, um, they went into the Neptunes for for tryouts, so we kind of went along with them, and most of them actually left. Like a lot of them, like left, they went for other other teams, but like I'm really the only one that stayed at the Neptunes. So now I'm here. But for like in the beginning, I didn't like AAU, and then I just kind of kept with it. And why didn't you like it? The coach, and we had Coach G at first, so it was kind of like I didn't really like her. But then Coach Grady came. I remember for practice, I saw I I saw him too. It was at some gym. We oh, that him. church. Yeah, that church gym. That's that was the day my, my account got hacked and I lost oh. all my money. I remember that day very clearly. Oh. Yeah. Well, but I remember when you started, there was a lot of times where you would leave practice in tears yes. because it was so different. It's a different culture. Yeah, it's really different. It's different. You have to have the mindset, both the parents and the children, to be able to adapt to, to and commit, definitely commit to commitment. AAU. Huge commitment. I think we learned the hard way because when we first got started, waking up on Saturday mornings, it was kind of like, oh, you know, today we're not going to go. I don't feel like going. You feel like going? Just go back to bed. So I think after a while, we kind of said, look, if we're going to really do this, we really really need to do this. So that's kind of what, I guess, got me in gear to help her get in gear. Right. That's hard, too. So for anyone that's considering AAU, there's some things that I wish I knew ahead of time. What? <laughs> so, you, so basically, life as you know it is over. Over. Completely over. The time commitment is not like rec ball mm-hmm. at all. And the season is never really over. No, ever. Well, we get a break in the holidays and then maybe like two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. 
yeah, there's two weeks off in the summer, and then it starts next season is starting, and then you you're right back at it. There's never a never over. No. But for our team, we have like trainings in the summertime, so mm-hmm. it's really never ever really over. Yeah. Ever. But that helps. Yeah, it helps. It keeps you girls consistent, and you know <laughs> you don't get that backslide. And then also hearing from other people in the AU community of other programs. So mm-hmm. for example, now you girls are doing future league. Yeah. In training, I in say. training, yeah. yeah. And whereas last year they participated in that three on three program right. yeah. through the yeah. church, that was a really good program too. So, so and we haven't mentioned it. Save your vacation time because it's all going to basketball. Oh goodness. PTO, I mean, sick time. We're, let's see, the next three weekends. We're looking forward to this weekend. We'll be in Hampton at the Blue Williams Sports Plex for the Widowmaker tournament. Yeah. And that's all weekend. All weekend. The following weekend, we have another tournament, the Elite 64. 64. And then the weekend after that, we are going to Pennsylvania for nationals. No, so, that's not nationals yet. Is it not nationals? I thought we have national? two nationals. It's, 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 it's two nationals. Two nationals. Pennsylvania and D.C. Yeah. Oh, I didn't. I, didn't, yeah, I just thought that the was. The U.S. Junior Nationals something. And then the D.C. And then D.C. is also a national. A national. Oh, so it's. They're definitely putting their talent on display. Because we were like three showcases. Was it three? It was two in Richmond. Right. And then it was the one at ODU. So that's oh, three. Yeah. yeah, three. Yeah. Three right. showcases. So in addition, the, you have to be ready for the financial commitment because that's no joke. No. So make sure you have a good fundraising coordinator, whoever you decide, whatever team you decide to join. Yeah. Because that definitely helps. And people are willing to pay. Yeah, they are. Especially little girls. We kind of put y'all on the corner. <laughs> okay, that sounds bad. Yeah, I'll, but I kind of. And I think in this area, we have such a huge basketball community. Yeah, we do. That everyone is really supportive and willing. If you ask for help, it's there. You just have to be willing to ask. Yeah. Um, Sing for it, dance for it. Basically. Right. Cash app. <laughs> we'll leave that in the comments. Right. No. Um, but your team does become your family. Yeah, and definitely a family. I mean, you and I, we've been friends since they started. Yep. It was the same year that they both started. And I think the the relationship that these girls have is really important. It like even important. you have your friends at school, you have your, your family or whatever, but your team is, they are like sisters. Yeah. Me personally, I prefer that my daughter stay with other kids who have same common goals. Absolutely. Because they don't have a lot of downtime. They can't. Right. Yeah. And it's get in trouble. It's or, the encouragement, you know, this the 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 likeness of what they have going on. You know, you know, when you have friends who who have things to lose, they they're kind of um not focused, you know. Right. And I think all these girls have the same end goal. They want to go to college, they want to play ball in college. I mean, because I always ask any friends that Cameron talks about is do they play a sport? Right. What are they doing? Because if you just come home and do nothing, then I feel like you're up to no good. And that may be because that's what I did. I didn't. I played softball, but I didn't play travel. Mm -hmm. I just played rec ball. So it was just here's your season. It's over. And then you can do whatever you want. But now they don't have an option. And I think because they started so young, they don't know any different. Mm -mm. And they expect, like, if I don't have practice or something to do today, then what do we Let's get up. Let's get out the house. We got to get moving. So I think that's definitely something they'll carry with them into adulthood. It's, it's definitely life lessons that go in this. Last season, at the end of last season, I remember we went to McDonald's. We were staying in, was it McDonald's or Chick-fil-A or somewhere? We were staying in line. And Mimi says, a.k.a. Morgan, um, she says to me, Mom, do we have practice tomorrow? I said, no, baby. We don't have, we don't have practice for another two weeks. And she started crying. Those are all these. All these started crying in the store. Because and I'm like, what is wrong? Because she's so used to, you know, getting up on Saturday mornings. You know, we're up every Saturday morning, 630 in the morning, getting ready for practice or a game or whatever. And it's it's like instilled in them. It's it's what they know. And then when you don't have any more, you think, OK, well, we get a break. But you don't want to just not do nothing. Right. You're so accustomed to doing it. And I like that. I like the fact that our girls are busy. I like that they have something to look forward to. It gives us something to look forward to. Right. Because I, at first I wasn't really a fan, but now I've just, I look forward to the time that we spend together. I sit at practice one because I want to see what's happening because I think that matters. It does. 
But it's I also have a friendship with all the other mothers and well families really because mm-hmm. some of the dads are there. Let's not leave the basketball dads out. Basketball, basketball dads, dads matter. <laughs> but it is like these this. They are your family. They are your friends. These are people you spend the most time with. Mm-hmm. So it really makes a difference. Mm-hmm. And I will say that the Neptune organization, they the, the most I hear from other people are positive things. You know, even though our parents, we, we can be a little aggressive, you know, when it comes to games and yelling and hooting and hollering because we pay the money and I paid I pay to do all this hollering and stuff. But, oh, well, um, you are the queen. Yeah, you know it. <laughs> she wears the crown. If you're a ref, I'm sorry that you ever have to ref our games. Oh, well. But no. But, but we do get, we, we've gotten a lot, cl- gotten closer. But what shows, what sticks out to me is that it shows to other teams, um, Red Tide, a couple of Red Tide parents, which is another AU organization out of Virginia Beach, Virginia. Shout out 757. Um, but they've they've said on several occasions, you girls, you, you, the whole organization, y'all just really do look like a family. When y'all come in, we can just really tell, like, there goes those Neptunes. Cause we roll deep, deep. We match everything. Everything, yes. yeah. It's a it's it's a way of life. We we really chose it as a way of life, and we have to show that through our commitment, so that the girls understand, you know, right. that we're just as committed too. And I think that makes a big difference when they see how committed their parents are to this. Absolutely, yeah. and it's it sounds cliche, but it's really enjoy the process mm-hmm. because there are going to be days when you when you wish your kid would quit. Mm-hmm. There are going to be days when your kid is begging you to quit. Mm-hmm. But you have to stick. If your child really wants to play basketball, like AAU is where you need to be. And you have to stick with it because there were plenty of days you came home crying. But it was like, no, we signed up for this. You made a commitment. You're going to finish it because that's it's not about basketball all the time. No. Like if you commit to something, you finish it. That's right. It's a life lesson. And luckily you decided that you loved it. And now even now you've been injured for the last nine weeks, but you're still at practice. Yeah. We still travel. We go to the tournaments because it's become it, such a huge yeah. part of her life that she's lost without it. Yeah. And really yeah. I would be too. Yeah. If we just yeah. were disappeared for those last two months. I think that's important. You know, when, when, when a player is injured and they can't actively participate in a game or practice, I think it is very important for them to still be around because they're still abreast of what's going on. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. sports psychology is a real thing. Like it yeah. will change. I think it changed would change her demeanor if I took it away from her. Yeah. And she wants to be there. So why would I Take say that. no? Like yeah. it's not anybody's fault that she got hurt. Right. And but at the same time, it's like you made a commitment to your team, so you're going to, to show up. I agree. I agree. So um, I think anybody who is looking um, to put their child in AAU, any type of sport, not just basketball, but they really do need to do their research. Yeah. Um, I think what stuck out to me when we actually look, because your, your take on how you ended up in AAU is a little different from mine. At the end of the AAU season, um, I do remember one of the other moms had looked into two different teams and sent that to me. The first one was Red Tide. I didn't like what I saw on the website. It was like, you got to try out. You got to schedule a tryout. I'm like, ah, oh, that sounds a little, little too formal. You know, my kids only, what, how old were you at the time? Like eight or nine? It was a little much, you know, for it to, I felt that was too much pressure. I understand the, the capacity of AU. But <clears throat> once I reached out to, excuse me, Coach T, mm-hmm. Which I think the only reason why you didn't really care too much for her is because she was very harsh. She was very stern. You know, she she wanted what she wanted. She and I was still work. new. Yeah, I, I was so new to this. So maybe if, if I had a little bit more experience in AU, that I might have been a, you got to start better ac- acclimated. But you had to start it, somewhere. Yeah, and that was a good start. You know, I think we were the the way the stars fell. You know, the, the way things happened, we ended up with a wonderful coach. And not to yeah. take that from Coach T, because no, I think she, she is, is an excellent is coach. coach. She is an excellent coach. And I think it was good to get Cameron acclimated mm-hmm. to this environment. Right. She yeah. is an amazing coach. And her team is doing outstanding things yes. because she's still coaching for the Neptunes. Yes. She's coaching the high school girls. But I think that the delivery was a little much for eight-year-olds. Yes. Yes. So, but – Shout out to Coach T because she is an awesome coach. She really is. And I hope for you, like, you yeah. get a chance to play with her 
again yeah. because yeah. she is such a great coach. She really is. Not to take away from Grady because we never want to lose Grady, but yeah, yeah, we're we're very lucky to have. Her we have Grady. a good pool of coaches, yeah. so yeah. that we would be. I don't think I'd be upset if you play for any of them because yeah, just like the Neptunes gets people who are committed and families that are committed. Like if you're not all in, you I don't think this is the place for you. And they drop like flies. You can see the ones that just go. Yeah. They're like, oh, the and they make excuses. Oh, my kids not getting enough playing time. And I feel like that's the thing that a lot of parents miss. Yeah. You know, you pay for this. Yes, this is something you pay for. But you have to make your kids understand that when they go to practice and they do this, they have to put in that work. Yeah. Your money is not going to make them no. play. You right? have to earn your plan. Yeah, you have to earn it's your up to you. It really is. So when you go to practice, what what do you focus on? Um, just most of the time, Coach Grady says that practice, like practice, is the the competition. You have to work yeah. to beat your other teammates on the court. Y'all are y'all are, y'all are family. Y'all are a team. Uh-huh. Y'all have to work together. But in practice, it's 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 every, everyone for themselves. So no holds barred. So you 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 have to work to beat the next person. If you're in second, beat the first person. If you're in third, beat the second person. It's not. Never settle for being last. Yeah, never, never settle for being last. Yeah. For me, I think uh, my motivation during practice is well, um, what is it? Motivation is that. How you play, how you practice is how you play, mm-hmm. and I want to show up when I'm playing. I want people to know that I'm I'm the best player out there. I carry my team, so I go out out in practice, just so I'm I'm used to that, and it becomes second nature. So by the time I get on the court, I'm balling like balling. <laughs> balling. Well, pace yourself, baby, because you kind of got a little knee issue. But bottom line, <clears throat> I do want to say this. Bottom line with all of this, this um. AU basketball is to get these girls a full ride scholarship for college. Um, doesn't have to be D1, you know, doesn't have to be the best school. I don't think either one of you are looking to play in the WNBA, mm-hmm. but to me, I feel like if my daughter graduates from college debt free, yes. this was all worth it. Absolutely. That, that is a huge problem. For a lot of kids who go to school, you know, they're taught growing up, oh, you have to go to college, go to college, but they take out all these loans and they go to school. By the time they graduate, they have to pay back these loans. And then the money that they're making, it's okay money, but you're you're broke because you have to pay back money that you borrow for your education. That's the boat that I'm in right now. Like I have a lot of student loans. Mm -hmm. I started school late. My one year off turned into 10, but that's not relevant. <laughs> but it is. But you have to take, I mean, in my situation, I'm, I had to take out student loans to be able to afford to go to school. And I don't want that for you. Mm-hmm. So if you're going to play basketball mm-hmm. anyway, because you love it, yeah. why not have the same goal? Right. And I think that's something we're blessed that our coaches have the same mentality. I think exactly. he gets everybody that he can into school and that's what we're playing for and he makes it known right now at even in middle school mm-hmm. that these girls that's your ultimate goal yes and that's very important um we again we're very lucky to be a part of the neptunes organization i think a lot of people who do come and decide to stay um Love they it. enjoy it yeah, yeah they yeah. do especially if they've experienced other teams <clears throat> excuse me i think the ones who um Whose mindset is more based on the amount of playing time? They're not, they're not looking at it the right way. No, they're in it for all the wrong reasons. Yeah, and at this point, no, none of us. I say us because I feel like I'm part of the team too. Are like the D one, whatever players. Like they're not Elizabeth Williams or right. Megan Walker. Right. Yet, they get there. They have the potential, yeah. but this is what they're working for. That's right. That's right. Who do you like to watch basketball? Like, like big players. Who's your favorite player? Like, in professional leagues. Sorry, like, who do you see? Like, you want to say, okay, I see this person. Let me try to mimic their game, or you know, I want to be able to do things like this person. Honestly, there's no one person. Like, it's honestly just like social media in general. 
like I follow a lot of hashtags like like um over time stuff like that. YouTube generation. It's not even in Instagram. So Instagram generation. I follow a lot of those kind of websites like and and seeing all all the all the moves other teams are doing and other 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 things and seeing how well they do and how how effective the move is or 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 how the mentality on the court is or the attitude it just makes you want to do it. But if I were to say one person, I'd probably pick Draymond Green because I like his attitude on the court. He's a bit of a bully. Yeah, and I like it. I like that. I know another bully. Okay. <laughs> And you, me, me, it's been this person for the longest, but Megan Walker, this is going to be my answer until somebody else comes around. But right now, it's Megan Walker. UConn. Huh? Who she play for now? UConn. She's gone. Mm -hmm. And luckily, y'all got to meet her. Yeah. At Boo before she went off. I did. I did. Did I you know. meet her? No. I don't know oh, if she did, it, but I know I did. Oh. <laughs> no, dude, she is. was the number one no. player. Yeah. High, number one high school player last year? This was her freshman year. What school yeah. did she play for? Monacan? Yeah. She's from Richmond area. But she, Cap City. She coached Cap City. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I remember. I remember now. Okay. But it was, and I will say this about. Megan, she Rod had said something to her that you know, can you take a picture with my daughter? And she waited back and like she was so humble and yeah. she was so nice to Cam. Mm-hmm. And it was just a really she's actually like a dope player, but she's also like just a genuine That's good nice. human yeah. being. Like she's so nice. That's what I hope. I hope that this through you girls' experiences, you'll want to give back. Like a lot of the older girls do, you know, I, I do notice like in practices, girls who've gone off to college, they come back, yeah. you know, yeah. 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 And, and I think that helps, you know, your projection on, on life. Like, okay, you know, they're doing this. This is where I'm trying to get to. And just the fact that they're, they're wanting to, to share their experiences or help, you know, helping your pathway. I think that's, I think that's important. Well, and you guys are role models too because the younger Neptune team. Oh yeah, baby the baby. Yeah. They're better than us one day. They are because <laughs> yeah, right. McKenna, <laughs> Bree, like they're gonna be better, like. Okay, Bree is the beast. Yeah, right. Beastful, like, yeah. well, it's like second grade, right? Like, yeah. She's yeah. So cute. She is such a cute. But they look up to the. They want to the real ne- lady Neptune yeah. because they look up to y'all. So I think it's a good thing because even already at twelve years old, both y'all are already um, role models. Mm-hmm. So if you have that now and you see that, then you'll carry that with you as you grow older. And know the importance of being one. And then you pay attention to what you're doing and how you're acting and how things are coming across, you know? And your presence on social media because coaches are going to see it. Yeah. Recruiters are going to see it. Like it matters the how you project yourself. Yeah, all of that is important. But these are life lessons that our kids are getting from – AAU basketball. It is so much bigger than basketball. It is. It really is. I, I can't lie. I look forward to seeing all of the Neptune parents. Like, I think most times when we go to practice, I'm more excited to go sit and talk to, you know, the parents. Even though I do pay attention to what's going on, you know, the plays, the older we get, the plays get a little more complicated for me to understand because I knew Candy. I knew that play. I remember, I remember <laughs> Candy. I remember Candy. <laughs> now they got X and all right. this other stuff. Invert. Good. The coach is texting you videos, so make sure you know it. Yeah. But, I mean, hey, I'm just there for the snacks. That's right. <laughs> the snacks and the drinks, because we do we do, we do, do have fun as, as parents. Um, last year, we did a lot of tailgating outside, because <laughs> that's another thing. That's another thing. I'm going to let you know now. You have to pay not only for your kids to play, but you got to pay to watch them. Yep. So it, it doesn't matter what capacity – you know, whether they're in middle school or playing AU, you're coming out your pocket. Just to even go to practice, take them to practice, you're paying for them to do that. But when it's time for them to play a game, like, we know we're getting ready to be broke just this weekend. Just yeah. just to go to Boo Williams. Yeah. But it's worth the sacrifice because you love it. So you like it, I love it. And I do. I do. It's important. On a scale from 1 to 10, how would you rank basketball in your in your life of, of importance? Eleven. Yeah. I do, Eleven. I do it every day, Mom. Eleven. Like every yeah. Day. Every single day. Training, 
You have games, like. As of now, you got one day off. One day. Yeah. Which is? Today, Friday. <laughs> Which is really in the day off now because we're doing a podcast. Yeah. But, but, but. No days off. I had a whole day off because I didn't go to school today, so. Don't, don't be telling people that. <laughs> it makes me look like an irresponsible mother. Okay, I was sick this morning. That sounds better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. Um, we are on Instagram, Real Basketball Mom 757. That's Instagram. Um, these girls have Instagrams as well. Yeah. Right. So thank you all. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. bye.